My name is Donovan Taylor. I'm a senior in the business school studying international business and management, and I'm a student on the FAIR Finance Portfolio. And the opportunity is on this team, excuse me. And so, as Tong Shin previously mentioned, one of the highlighted initiatives that we have at the Beck Center is the Opportunity Zone Investor Council. So, what is the Opportunity Zone Investor Council? <clears throat> it's comprised of 15 highly influential investors, developers, and fund managers who have come together to really lead the national conversation around impact and opportunity zones. So, for our first Opportunity Zone Investor Council meeting over the summer, there was a moment of contention when Council members were discussing um, just the history of a lack of trust between communities and developers and whose responsibility it was to rebuild that relationship. Um, and you know, it really revealed to the Beck Center that there was a real need of research on community engagement models and best practices. As such, I did some research on domestic models of community engagement that I'm going to share with you today. And so I'll start off by defining community engagement. Community engagement is a process through which community members are empowered to own the change that they want to see and involves communication, problem solving, governance, and decision making skills and strategies. So community engagement is something more than just that you do to feel good. You know, there are measurable benefits to engaging with communities in meaningful ways. So the first is you have more accurate problem identification. Community members are experts of their neighborhoods, and as such, they have invaluable feedback and, um, and insights that, are, um, that can reveal a lot about the problems that they're facing on a daily basis. Next, you can reduce your risk. Part of the reason why Amazon wasn't successful in Long Island City was because they didn't have a robust community engagement strategy. As such, they didn't understand the political nuances and just the overall feel from the community on Amazon. And as such, they wasted a lot of time and resources that they could have allocated elsewhere. Thirdly, you can improve your relationship with communities and local governments. Local governments love to see developers that are you know, showing demonstrated commitment to low-income communities. And as a result, they often give additional tax incentives that make the deal more lucrative and appealing to investors. And then also you're promoting democratic values and improving your legitimacy and brand. And so when I was doing research, I came across a lot of community engagement models. <coughs> However, this model really stood out to me because it, it, you know, it succinctly encapsulated everything that you need to know about community engagement. And a lot of the models that exist today are iterations of this original model. And so this model is called Sherry Arnstein's um, Civ Ladder of Civic Participation. Um, and so just to give you a brief background on Sherry Arnstein, she was the head of HUD, um, Housing and Urban Development, during President, President Lyndon B. Johnson's administration. And as you can see, um, it goes from non-participation at one to citizen control at eight. And so for non-participation at these levels, community, communities are really excluded from the decision-making process. There's zero transparency, um, and they're really unaware of what's going on. Um, next, you have tokenism. And at these stages of community engagement, community members are kind of involved in the process, but they're not really empowered. They don't have any influence over any of the decision making. Um, and then finally, you have citizen control. And at these stages of uh, uh, at the stages of, of community engagement, um, community members are aware of what's going on. They're actively engaged in the planning, and they're having a um, and instrumental impact on decision-making processes. This model has been in existence for several decades. So why are so many low-income and minority communities still excluded from development and left behind? To be honest, when we're thinking about urban development, it's at the intersection of a lot of um, structural issues. We're dealing with gentrification and displacement. You're dealing with um, over-policing and mass incarceration. Um, in addition, you're dealing with the legacy of you know, discriminatory policies set in place by the government, like redlining and, um, and segregation. And so our recommendation is that you can overcome the challenge of a lack of trust between communities and developers by investing in it. You know, you need to put resources and time into building these relationships. Um, as I said before, community members are experts, um, and they have a certain amount of expertise that is invaluable. And so as such, it's important that if we're utilizing them as a resource, you're compensating them for their work, just like you would any other consultant. 
Next, values matter just as much as tactics. As an organization, you can have a really robust community engagement strategy, but if as an organization the values aren't there, there's a misalignment between the values and the strategy, um, you know, if there's a misalignment, then community members will find that your, that your intentions are disingenuous and they'll be less likely to you know, be receptive to your work. And then your outcomes matter more than your intent. There has been a serious debate in this industry for a long time about which is more important, having great intentions or having great outcomes. Um, and as a developer, you can have this fantastic idea to solve food deserts in Baltimore, but if your outcome as a result of your work is that people are being priced out of their neighborhoods and displaced, then you aren't creating a sustainable impact for existing residents. Um, so due, due, for the, due to the sake of time, I'm going to like, um, I can't talk about all of the recommendations, but I'll just say that they're all equally important and should be considered by investors. Impact reflection on me. Um, so working at the Beck Center since the summer has been a truly impactful experience. It's been a fantastic experience. Um, prior to coming to Georgetown, I was really involved in community advocacy work in Baltimore. And the perception that communities have of developers is that developers are motivated solely by financial gains at the expense of low-income communities. As such, it was really important for me to try to figure out how we could bridge, bridge the gap between communities and developers. So after conducting uh, my research, I wrote a speech about why community engagement is important to me personally and how um, community engagement um, can be influential and impactful into creating a more equitable society. Um, I then shared this speech at a community dinner in Baltimore with some of the Opportunity Zone Investor Council members and local community leaders. And, you know, it went really well. People were very receptive to what I was saying. And honestly, I believe that um, they truly understood that the impact of their work will um, influence the future um, society that we're all trying to create today. Um, thank you. Um.